Hi everyone, in this session we are going to look at content security policy. From security point of view, uh, we will be talking about what the CSP means and what is the security best practice and there are a few tips where exactly this can be used and at what point in time during the delivery of the project we should ensure that this is in place. Right? All of those experiences and some of the basic things we are going to cover in this session. Yeah? To explain the content security policy, I'll be taking a sample application in my system. Right now, I'm in Dev Studio of Pega application. Anyways, I'll be covering the topic by taking Pega application as an example. Even if you're working on non-Pega application, the concept of content security policy, this is like staying from many years in the web applications and it's a standard and you would find a lot of documentation, preferably more on Mozilla Firefox documentation. Yeah. Okay. Now getting into the content security. So within Pega application, if we navigate to security, this is a place where you can notice the content security. So at least you understood where exactly in Pega application we can configure the content security policy. But the question is, what is content security policy, right? Uh, just before going there, always remember that Pega product will be providing you whenever you create an application by default. This is the policy name which it sets. PX default allowable. What that means, we'll come back in a while. But for now, let's go ahead and see what is there within this PX default allow all policy, content security policy. Oh, I'm trying to open that. Yeah, you see that now we are in PX default allow all content security policy. If you have a question like what is this CSP? Uh, I'll put my understanding first and later I'll also show some resources from the web which will be useful not to confuse you with a lot of information if you are a beginner or if, if you have never heard of this before or if you're not confident on this I think this basic information should be good enough for you to deal with your application or your future applications without any confusion okay now content security policy is a set of directives whatever you see here these are all directives okay so we can expand and see what each directive uh, has uh, in its own uh, section that's fine but before going there the most important thing is to broadly look at these to understand okay default source base you are even if you don't understand just try to have a glance at these overall there are these many directives which we can configure under our policy right now what exactly these directives are for directives are meant to be directing something right so what they do in my understanding is so right now this is our let's say this is a pega application right our pega application on the web browser will be able to render information from a lot of resources right so suppose if i am trying to configure these directives huh? so example uh, i need to load the information onto my application only from my domain Example, I do not want to load any information from other websites. And then what I would do is, I'm not going to make this selection. Allow all is like I'm trying to allow any information. Example, if you take form action as a directive, I am saying my application can render the form actions of other applications, of other websites as well. Allow all means there is no restriction. Any website or any URL form action can be accepted by my application right if you want to know more around this one even there is a meaningful description over here from pega you can also refer to this yeah from this uh, guided text that is one thing uh, i would say if you're a beginner don't try to get expertise on each of these section in one go but probably if you know this whenever you are facing any issue i'll also mention you the use case where exactly you can run into the trouble with this and how to address that uh, verbally yeah but coming back to this okay now we understood content security policy is a set of directives which is basically ensuring the content that my application is trying to load right okay example uh, the name suggests in this case px default allow all is there any way that I don't want to allow all but instead I just want to secure my application and uh, I want to keep the security strict. Yeah, maybe you would have guessed it already and at the application level Wherever you have configured this policy name you would also see PX default secure. That means 
that is secured for now let me select px default secured as a content security policy this is again provided by pega and you would see that it's not allowing all it's only allowing the self that means the same uh, domain same application right so any other websites if you have to allow either you have to make an exception by whitelisting by adding an entry here let's stick to the form action itself because we have just spoken about it example I don't want to allow form actions of other application or websites in my application but I just want to ensure that you know only my self applications form actions are allowed in my app this is good enough but if there is any exception maybe you are configuring some SAML SS or somewhere where you need to allow the form action for IDP identity provider okay or there could be many other examples in that scenario you would come here and you would configure your IDP login URL over here where you are trying to allow the form action of identity provider in your application so that is allowed form action that is like you're just whitelisting one website form action over here in that way it is still uh, allow all i would say it is totally not secure uh, i won't recommend that but till the time if you're debugging some issue then it is okay please go ahead but ensure that this allow all is deselected for all of the directives and if you're whitelisting something please take an approval from respective teams in your project to ensure that uh, you're getting the approvals before sending the application to production okay hope you understood uh, or you got the high level idea on what is the essence of Pega providing two content security policies by default px default secure which is like secured by default if you want to change anything if you want to make any change on top of this how to do i'll be trying to uh, explain see right now this is final it's not like you can change you can whitelist uh, any other website urls over here but there, there is a way or there is a design on how we can do this right so you we understood suppose if i'm just building my application and most of the developers would think hey maybe i can take this headache later probably i'll start allowing everything for now and later see once you allow all that means it's allowing all there is no point of reject and report okay suppose if you're not allowing all you're rejecting something okay that means you're secure then if you are selecting reject and report that means wherever you're securing you're not allowing the form actions of external websites or any other directives of other websites or urls then it will be rejected you can you'll be able to see on your browser's console and also it will be reported yeah that's how it is if you select report only i again won't recommend this one if you're in a debugging mode or evaluating your application this is absolutely fine but in the mode i always prefer to uh, select uh, reject and report before you push your application to production yeah, this is very important policy name you're not supposed to allow everything if you're debugging something that's okay but you have to ensure policy name is always secured content security policy is always a secured one and mode is always a reject and report okay now coming to the question okay i go with px default secure which doesn't allow anything but i do have a use case where i should allow the form action of external site or third party site right and then i have to make or i have to whitelist this the way of doing that you would have already guessed by now example you just have to save as instead of px default secure you can give your own example if your organization uh, at the org level if you're trying to place the content security policy or app level then you can say save as and you can give your app level default secured okay like you can save as and you just have to mention uh, it's very slow but let's wait for it to pop up yeah in the name uh, instead of px default secure during save as what we do is we, we give the name of uh, org or whatever your org is or whatever your app level if you are configuring app default secure example my app name is some crm so crm uh, uh, some scrm okay um, a crm default secure so this is the place where i am going to you know uh, configure all of the directives or whitelist things but no i'm not creating in this demo i think it's already understood i hope by most of you I'm just discarding this but idea is once you save as this one into your own rule that is like your own app default secured rule or your own org default secured rule then you have all the directives anyways by default nothing is selected for allow all but if you would like to 
you you can but that is not recommended for debugging you can but ultimately once you boil down to the list of websites which you cannot avoid but definitely have to whitelist because you take any applications in reality they might be interacting with other third party systems and you may have to whitelist them after taking certain approvals only in that case you will follow this approach and you will be whitelisting them over here notes is just only for the descript descriptive purposes but you will try to add the url over here and you just whitelist yeah and this takes in the uh, format of uh, wildcard like star if you mention asterisk if that means it will allow all so just be aware of that one i think once you do this for one directive you'll be able to master for all the other ones another important maybe a bonus tip here is whenever you're debugging your application always see that you know whenever you get some exception on the screen you're getting blocked or you saw some exception uh, then you try to uh, open the inspector and console like from the developer tools please check uh, uh, this one. sorry please uh, go to the tools and uh, developer tools right and navigate to console and yeah i meant this one navigate to console and verify uh, if you're getting any exceptions over here mostly whenever you find any exceptions right you would see them here uh, in mostly uh, in a color that you would be uh, it will be evident and you can take an action on that suppose example a form action is not allowed you, you will be able to see those exceptions in the console along with the url and you can pick that url and provide it over here yeah hope uh, most of you have followed this one and uh, this is a simple topic but the most important thing in the delivery of any project is uh, because Pega by default creates an application with default allow all, that doesn't mean that we should be sending the application in the same way to production in that manner. Pega also has a security checklist which clearly coaches all the Pega developers or Pega teams to ensure that it is uh, default secured before pushing uh, any application to production. Okay, so hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.